No classic show, but music. You compose music for this? Yes, so in lieu of doing a show which we're kind of known for, namely kind of doing performative shows, I decided to place that other creative process that always happens every season, the delivery of the collection, and I sort of projected it onto another output. So I've always wanted to make music. I've always wanted to work with musicians to create an output that is sonic. The idea was to kind of come together and create this whole other space, kind of like we do with doing the shows. You know, I create the collection under one narrative and then when I see it, I think about how I deliver it. Like, how do we want the models to move and the dancers to dance and the music to kind of layer all of that together. This time, you know, after seeing the collection, I kind of wanted to do something almost slightly divorced from it in a sense. It's just a complete other cinematic journey, but kind of rendered in the same colors. And that sounds a little bit weird, but this idea of synesthesia, I think I really relate to in terms of like feeling colors and hearing colors. So we sort of started together in our first meeting, myself, Tom and Robert, and we showed each other you know, things that we liked and I showed them the collection. And then we kind of just like had this big whiteboard in front of us in the meeting room that we had. And I just said, we just need to come up with a story. So I just started to draw this interesting character that looked like a cat. And then we just projected onto this and then we're like, okay, it's this God of music. You know, what does this cat say? How does it talk? What would it say to somebody who's listening to the album? And then we just constructed this whole narrative after that. So there was this journey of this kind of God of music taking you through three stages, like love, hate, and nostalgia. And then it transports you into different areas. It's sort of very kind of trippy. And for me, it was a really great creative way to sort of like coagulate things together into three sections. Coagulate all of these looks into three sections. Music and clothes. What's the art of noise? The art of noise is my autumn winter 22 collection. It's a collection that is expressed in three parts. The physical, which is referencing shapes of instruments from cubist artists like George Brack and Pablo Picasso, and also soft sculptures from Klaus Oldenburg. The cultural, which is inspired by the no wave movement of the 1970s, early 80s New York and the emotional, which is inspiring the prints and the fabrics of the collection, which is inspired by op art, and also the kind of feeling and sensorial feeling that you get when you listen to music. The physical. The cultural. The emotional. Charles, the designer, the art director, the music conductor? Yes, I feel a bit like a music conductor. Tell with this me about collection. the orchestra. So I guess the orchestra is my team. With this collection, I really wanted to reveal my new team that I have acquired in the last year. I also felt it was really important to have the voices or the sounds of my team sort of permeate through in the writing as they are kind of gatekeepers of the collection in the way they're the ones that kind of design and shape it as well as myself. And I kind of feel a bit like an orchestra with them as I'm sort of leading them now. I'm not sort of directing and drawing the collection as I used to. I'm directing people and leading them and conducting them to design things in certain ways or having different creative processes. Is it about tempo and volume? I would say so. In the studio, it definitely is about tempo and volume. Okay, so the team is the orchestra that you direct. And so you stimulate their creativity by giving them, you know, volumes and tempos. And uh, so who's playing what instruments and what do they do? So we have a multitude of different instruments in the studio. Uh, Daniel is my designer and he has been with me for around two years. He kind of, I guess, sort of shapes the collection, does the majority of the designing across menswear. And he shapes the collection and range plans it um, alongside Rue Kwok, who started with us very recently. She's been with us for eight months. She's a women's wear designer now. So that's really exciting about having somebody designing clothes for 
what they would want to wear on their own body. I think that's why our menswear has been quite authentic. It's been the stuff that I would always wear myself. So having a woman designing the women's wear, I think is really strong. Um, we also have Sophia Cook Brown, who is our product developer. And she is the one that kind of is really refining the details of everything. You know, assisting Naomi, who heads up all of the product, who's been with me since the very beginning. But, you know, we have somebody who has like a, a third eye on all of the details and refining and refining. And it's really great to have that across the sales range. Christopher is our fabric developer and um, works alongside the design team. Diani Diaz has joined us and she's our studio manager and my right hand woman. She's absolutely amazing. She really helps me with the just day to day chaos that is having your own business. And, um, you know, it's, it's really exciting. We also have Charlie Hughes, who is our in-house graphics designer or art worker, as you call it. I like to call him like more of an art director. So he's focusing on all of the outputs that come from the brand. So all of the photography and the graphics and the social media side of things. Um, so he kind of overviews all that and all printed materials as well. So having that eye on things. And we also have a new person starting called Rosie. So she's starting on social media in a couple of weeks. She starts on 21st. That's very exciting. So can I can I see it like this? You went from a um, duo to a quartet to a chamber little orchestra and one day we will have a full symphonic. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Sometimes, you know, I like to kind of galvanize my team to think really sort of like instinctively and just go with one kind of like shape or pattern or you know intention and just bring that forward that anything is valid within a fashion design context which I think is really exciting so you know I think I've just got a confidence now that I haven't had for a long time in just knowing that I can just achieve anything through just really sticking to it and applying confidence to it which I know sounds a bit cheesy but I don't know this year especially I love applying confidence to it because I think it brings me back to the emotional stage of any type of creation you know be it clothes or words or music mm -hmm. right i read something about your uh, fabric designer or researcher and he said um, i like the idea of creating fabrics inspired by how sound frequencies manipulate matter mm -hmm. when i saw the collection in the studio the other day and maybe i'm wrong but i felt that there were all the lover boy signatures from where i started seeing your fashion put there in different clothes or then then accumulated together so it was very much signed but mm. they were not logos mm -hmm. but then he's saying that he used the lover boy check and he blurred the line to give the impression of music mm. blurring the lines of sounds mm -hmm. am i making sense yes you totally are um i mean chris is really really talented and i i think after working with him for such a long time i really understand how his brain works and what he is sort of like how it sort of almost pulsates he's really good at sort of repetition and and repetitive kind of creative processes so like for example knitting is a repetitive creative process he's really great at seeing things in like patterns so when it now so he really applies that well to our fabric design so obviously tartan with its grid and its repetitive nature jacquards as well with a repetitive nature and then he's really good at taking my complete chaotic drawings and turning them into a repeat print and so when we were talking about this collection and he went off and responded to my creative deck of where we were going, he came back to me with all of these amazing images of sound through matter, which is, you know, like um, when you see videos of sand on a speaker and then it kind of moves in different ways when the bass goes through the speaker or water, for example. This collection is presented by an actual piece of music. Mm -hmm. So the piece of music and the collections are cannot be separated because one represents the other. Mm -hmm. So what's the result? What's the EP that you're unveiling together with the unveiling of the collection to the actual customers, the public? So the EP will be released when the, the, the collection drops to stores and to our e-commerce. And I almost see it like our campaign. 
So it's in lieu of a show and it's also in, in lieu of a campaign. But then I don't like that term because it kind of feels like it's sort of trying to replace like a substitute teacher or something. But it's actually like, you know, another output that has come from the creative process. So it's just a new thing for us. And it's a whole other world, but it just sits in tandem. It's kind of coloured in the same way, which I think is really fascinating. And, you know, I feel like it's the start of what we want to do moving forward. So this is not just for the season. I kind of want to do this with every collection release a body of music that goes alongside it and not necessarily do like a big performance every time. It's very interesting because it makes me think about, about the punctuality of a show and the seasonality of a collection whilst the music doesn't have any season. You know, we're still listening to Velvet Underground to mm -hmm. mention something you mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. So, But, you know, as you say, you know, it's this idea of it being something that people can enjoy again and again. You know, this is one thing that I'm trying to think of with Loverboy as a strategy, not thinking just seasonally about being innovative with the designs. It's like, how does Loverboy become a household name or timeless or exist for forever and not have to rely on like a new creative director to you know bumble it up after in many years hopefully I, I i move on to something else i think the tartan it's like a music composition it's there forever and then it doesn't matter if it's applied to something long or short or you know big or small and uh, so are all your other you know signs and designs that are making the fabric of your clothes and the fabric of your music mm -hmm. i love that I love that lateral approach. The grid format can be applied to many different things. I, I love the idea that kind of anything goes in this space. So I think I understand this, but I like there's something here that you wrote that says that you were referring to New York in the 1780s where musicians didn't need to know how to play an instrument or didn't need to have an instrument. So it's a little bit like the idea of a composition that to a non-trained ear sounds more like noises than actual sounds. Mm -hmm. Is that what you guys did? In the room, we were definitely making weird noises and sounds and putting on lots of different experimental pieces of music. I think the thing that I loved about the, what I loved about it in that moment was I felt validated from that no wave sort of space where people did just pick up instruments not knowing how to play it, but that was what was cool. That's what people wanted to hear was that naivety. And so that kind of validated this fact that I didn't really even know, you know, what was a verse to a phrase to a chorus. I mean, you know what a chorus is, but you know, in order to kind of like shape what the sounds were, I always had in my head like, oh, you have to be trained and you have to like know programs in order to actually gain what you want from something but obviously I have Thomas who knows how to make music yeah and um, I just applied my skills and creative direction to it but then I was you know still really naive and I think that's what's exciting and I think that's what's hopefully going to make this music that we create more interesting. The message is love.